name that fiber because it's actually really amazing. The fibers that we see every day look very different when looked at under a scanning electron microscope. And actually, one of the big uses for scanning electron microscopy is to identify fibers, sometimes in forensic situations. There literally are those CSI situations where, you know, the suspect left behind unique fibers of their own. However, also in everyday situations, there are suspects who leave behind fibers. Let's say you're a pharmaceutical manufacturer and you see that there's some mystery fibers that are turning up in some pills and you don't know how it's happening. Is somebody not observing clean room, um, you know, proper clean room procedures, what's happening? Well, if you can identify the fiber that's getting into the substance, you might be able to decide, you know, that's probably Mary because she's the one always wearing that mohair scarf she knit. We know she's the suspect. So actually identifying fibers is really, really critical in forensic situations, but also in terms of product quality control and also sometimes in determining what fibers work best in certain industrial applications, which is slightly less exciting than figuring out who committed a crime, but also no less important. It's also important for figuring out what you're knitting with. So we're going to show you a fiber. Ooh. Yeah, isn't it pretty? What do we... <laughs> I'm going to guess Chihuly. Chihuly. Okay. All right. Um, so it could be a fiber from Chihuly. Any other guesses? I can hint. It's a blend. There's a natural in it. Close. Oh, okay. So we have two guesses for wool, and one guess that it's actually is Chihuly. Okay. Yeah. Really, maybe I don't know. Are those maybe um, because I see some fibers that maybe look a little bit hollow? I'll say alpaca. I don't know. You're getting close. Closer. Closer. I don't know. Do you want to find out? Yes. Yeah. It is 78% mohair, 13% wool, 9% nylon. Yeah. That's the chihuly. That's the chihuly. Yeah. You can actually. Mohair must be the center cord. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then here's the nylon. And it's interesting because when you're knitting with a blend or when you're looking at a blended fiber, it looks really cohesive. It looks like it's really well integrated. But you can see here the mohair is definitely kind of standing alone. And the the nylon and the wool are kind of blended in superficially almost. So it's really interesting when you see it. You can also, when you look up close, I don't know how visible it is um, on these slides, but you can actually see the twist of the mohair and it's very different. Oh, I can see the twist. It's really cool. It's really cool. You can see the twist of the mohair. You can see that there isn't really any twist in the nylon. It's just sort of independently vertical there. So it's, it's a ton of fun to take a look at this. But this is a mohair blend. And um, there were two guesses for wool, so partial credit. All right, this is not too difficult to guess. Who wants to name this fiber? Going once. Wool? wool? Pure wool. OK. I cheated. Oh, OK. Oh, so she's right, so then I shouldn't guess. I think Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay, wool. I was going to say Angora. Okay, let's see. It is 100% oh. wool. What kind of wool? It's merino. It's merino. It's nice and soft and fluffy. You know, merino has such a silky feel. Really, it's eye-opening when you look at something under an SEM, how different it is from its surface appearance, like radically different. It's merino. This actually has a very silky hand. It's actually really, really smooth as a yarn, but it has a nice fluffy look to it when you look at it under a microscope. All right. Mystery fiber. Mohair. Mohair. We're in unison. Mohair. Okay. It is... It's the same thing from looked at from a different angle, from a, a different microscope. You look at the same fiber 
from a different, with a different tool, you see a completely different perspective on it. And when it comes to forensics, that's kind of really exciting. Okay, I'm low disk space. That's also very unexciting. Um, so you look at it with a different tool, and you can see that didn't pick up as much. This one didn't pick up on the colors, but you can see much more detail on the nylon fibers. You can see a little roughness here. You can see a lot more of the surface of each individual mohair. You can see any impurities. You can see any roughnesses and totally different perspective on the texture, which is why it's important to look at something from two different tools sometime to fully identify it. All right. Name this mystery fiber. Silk. Silk? That's what I think it is. Silk, okay. Cotton. Oh. Yeah. It looks like silk, but it's mercerized cotton, which obviously, it's yeah, it's got the shininess of silk. Mercerization obviously dramatically changes the texture, as you can see, because this is mercerized cotton. Cool. Very cool. I wouldn't see it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we can see the little crimson and over there. So maybe this is silk? It could be. Looks like that merino that we saw before with um, the white merino. Doesn't it look like that with like the shininess of the thing? I don't know. It could it looks be. Kind of hairy. Alpaca has hollow, yeah. has hollow fiber, so I feel like we would we should be able to see that. But I have no idea what I'm talking about, and I have a master's in psychology, which is not helpful right now. It's something plied. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, definitely plied. plied. Yeah. It's definitely plied. It could be something we've seen before, looked at now with a different microscope. Oh, that's true. Could it be that? 100% wool. You can guess 100% wool? Wasn't that what the white thing was? That was. That's the one that I think it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I'll agree with Alistair. Okay. It's always safest to agree with Alistair. He's usually right. You know. It's acrylic! Oh my god! Smooth yeah. to be like at least on the wool, it has a little bit of wave to it. Wow, acrylic! Yeah, it's acrylic. That's what it looks like. Right mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is acrylic. Cool. You have acrylic in your stash. I know. I've outed myself. Yeah. I have acrylic in my stash, and I'm not ashamed to. Okay, I'm deeply ashamed to admit it. <laughs> but acrylic has its place. It has so, its place. It totally does. It has its place. Yarn bombings. So you can't really do an effective yarn bombing without some acrylic because it's got to sure. stand up to outdoor wear. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, prints you don't trust with anything. Yes, yeah. And I will say acrylic's gotten a lot better than when I first oh, yeah. yes. experienced it like 15 years ago. It was like, oh, yeah. Real well. Yeah, this one has a, actually a soft hand, so it's okay. And again, it's really good for kids, dogs, and yarn bombings. Yep. So. It works pretty well, but it's surprisingly how similar it looks to the 100% wool. It so, did, it did look the, it tricked us, yep. Yeah, and the nice thing is it actually, it feels different, but it looks the same under magnification, which is actually really interesting. All right, again, this could be a new fiber. This could be a fiber we've already seen. Yeah, I think it's really tangled. So that means it's going to be fuzzy when it makes mm -hmm. that right. Mm -hmm. So angora or mohair, all right? Is it that? Actually, wouldn't mohair be even fuzzier? Well, I don't know. know. We're looking at it not a lot of. Not a huge. I don't think it's cotton or acrylic. Okay. Those are out. Yeah, yeah, those are out. Yeah, not it cotton. Could possibly be wool. I mean. Okay. I wonder if it's. I don't think it's alpaca. I don't know. Okay. I can't wait to find out, though. Okay. So we will find out. It is wool. Wool. 100% wool. A nice fuzzy wool, but 100% wool. All right. Now this, aside from looking like the flying spaghetti monster, yeah. um, what could it possibly be? Is that just one single like piece it. of yarn? Like it's just one single fiber? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, it looks like a single. Hair. Yeah. Not, we're gonna keep going mohair until it's mohair, right? Yeah. <laughs> we've already, I, one hint is we've already done mohair twice, so the odds of it being mohair again very little. are very little. It's got to be something super fuzzy. But mm -hmm. it's, like it's, it's a mix of fibers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like it's a barely, barely spun, so it looks like a, mm -hmm. an, an 
fiber. It's one fiber. No, it's roving of some kind. Not roving, but, but you know, not quite that unspun. But it just doesn't look plied. It's not. Yeah. Really. It's not plied. Christina, are you a spinner? Not yet, but I'm tempted. Not yet is the only thing you can say. I I am a fan of it. But that doesn't mean this is hand spun. Do you want to know what it is? Yeah. Acrylic and nylon blend. That is wild. Yes. Do you know what kind of yarn that was? Like, do you know the brand? It was a lion brand. It was like the bo oh, oh, like, uh, 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 yeah. Fisherman's, no, that's Fisherman's Wool. Fisherman's Wool. That's actually wool. Um, it was. Like homespun? It was kind of like a homespun boucle Oh, it was boucle yeah. Oh, you got that you tricked us on a boucle. Oh, well, it wasn't really a boucle. It was like one of those fluffy-ish, yeah. airy, more air than fiber yarns. So, yeah. It looks sort of unspun. Wow. Okay. This is a tough one. It gets harder and harder. It's a pretty color. Different microscope. Yeah, you have to factor out the color. Factor out the color, yeah. yeah. Completely factor out the color. This is a real mystery fiber. Have we had it before? I can't say. I'm going to say acrylic wool blend. Okay. Any, any other guesses? All right. I was close. Yeah. Partial yeah. credit. Partial credit. The, the, the boucle thing. Yeah. It's actually much more obvious on this one than the yeah. previous one. Well. She doesn't get a lot of yarn bombing. bombing. I actually am participating in a yarn bombing, which is why some of these were at the top of my stash. I can't say anything more about it right now, okay. but when it happens, it's going to be epic. Wow. So that's why I had a lot of crummy yarns that I took snips of. But what's this fiber? It's a mystery one, isn't it? I, I myself don't, I can't guess right now either. We're not saying mohair anymore. Not saying Still in. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I wonder if it's um, cotton. Lace. Could be cotton. We saw cotton. Yeah. But, but what was mercerized? We saw mercerized cotton. Yeah. And she did say before, we said, she, Mike said, I want to see unmercerized cotton. And Christina was like, hmm. There so maybe this be. is it. Yeah. It could be. <laughs> I, I don't know either at this point. I've forgotten what it is. Yeah. Okay. Mercerized cotton. Mercerized yeah. Still. It's right. still mercerized cotton. It looks it's wild. Really different from the other one. It looks wild. Well, you know what? It could also be the end, close to the end where it's gotten frayed. Oh, yeah. So it's not just the fiber properties itself, it's what's happened to the fiber during the course of its life, which can also tell you what's going on with the fiber. Something could happen and the wear and tear also shows on the fiber and it kind of can tell a story of what happened in this case just that it got frayed and worn as the stash churns not that my stash is churning around but that kind of also tells you what's been happening to your to your fibers all right name this fiber i really suspect it's something we've seen it could be. It looks very similar to something we've seen, but I don't know. It looks know. like wool again, right? It does look. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Or acrylic. Oh, yeah, it could be acrylic. So, so oh, no, we haven't seen silk. Well, it's sort of silk in a little bit. Like a yeah, tiny yeah, bit of silk. Yeah, it's very smooth. It's very smooth. Yeah, which is yeah. why I can I think see it's a nice not. Oh, I think it's fake. Oh, I think it's. 
Uh -huh. I think it's our yeah. But is it is it completely uniform? Because if you look closely, not could be. What if this is Leonard's gold hair? We've been guessing it forever. We it's acrylic. It's acrylic. Yeah. There's some manufacturing flaws in there, but overall it's relatively uniform. Yeah. Yeah. So the kind of the moral of this story is you can't judge a fiber by its feel. You can't judge a fiber by what your experience is necessarily with that same fiber from a different manufacturer because they can all look different. They can also start to look different based on the wear that they've had, the treatments that they've had, or the life that they've lived, basically. So it can have frayed in your bag. It could have had anything happen to it in the course of its life. Um, it can also simply have been manufactured differently from one manufacturer to the other. So if you look at an acrylic from one manufacturer, and it's not even coming down to like the cost. Sometimes you'll have like a really theoretically nice acrylic from a mid-level manufacturer or just a terrible acrylic from a slightly more expensive manufacturer. But the way these things look under microscopy, was it surprising? Yeah. Yes. Was it? We still haven't seen silk. We had mohair twice, yeah. we, and nobody guessed it was mohair, and other things looked like they should be mohair. They were fluffier, or yeah. they were, things were smoother than you imagined that they should be. So when you look at the microscopic world of fiber, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives, maybe it doesn't impact us that much, but it sort of tells you that you can't always judge a fiber just by its feel or by its look. So keeping an open mind, I still say save acrylics for yarn bombing is the best and as well dogs and children. Um, but at the same time, we've seen rough acrylics. We've seen really smooth cottons. So you never know.